uh, lectures. Pep Gatte, artistic director of La Fura de los Baos since 1980, has been participating in the staging of the company shows, integrating interactivity between user and a show through technology, synthesizers, 3D, 3D stereographs, web, and apps. He's uh, carried out more than 200 different shows between theater ins installations, performance, macro shows, movie, opera, in four of the five continents. Will give us a way of how to do this in real time, connecting with what Judith was saying. Pep, what Good afternoon. Thank you, Arnau, for inviting us. And I don't know if this is going to be a lineal conference or a non-linear conference. We don't have too much time and we have to get out of here on time. One of the things we would like to explain is how La Fura de los Baos started with interaction. Interaction in La Fura de los Baos is like a, a story of survival. We were such bad musicians. We started with multidisciplinarity because we were such bad musicians. We decided to take advantage of the best skills we each had to preserve uh, the uh, audience we had. Secondly, interact. When people escape, we had to grab them so that they stayed with us. That was the first interaction, and it was completely out of pure uh, need for survival. We came from a moment in which the uh, Spanish Constitution was uh, signed, and uh, people were celebrating liberty on the street, so we had a very... Uh, encouraged audience, people who were keen on new things and we were the ones in charge of doing them because there was nothing in new in Spain. Everything was uh, old, old, old fashioned. And thanks to the new material, uh, La Fura started having information from abroad suddenly and that, that permeated our brains. And this van, this van here, I think was two things. On the one hand, it was professionalization of the group because it was a gentle agreement. There were nine of us who would sit in the van. The rest we kicked out because those of us who bought the van said just nine of us bought the van and not until we finish uh, paying for the van. You cannot miss a show even if you have a broken leg. So we made an unprofessional thing into a more professional thing. Secondly, it was a forced brainstorm because it took us so long to go from Barcelona anywhere else that the hours we spent in the van were... You, do, remember what uh, you saw from the BBC, that room where they sit and, and have a brainstorming session? And Well, this was forced in this minute space of nine guys sitting together where unless you speak and prepare the show on your way to the show. This is one of the levers that made the Fura what it is nowadays. Now we can't uh, think of back then. It was a torture to be in the van. Another great lever for the Fura to be what it is are the accidents we had when we were so inexperienced. This is an accident we had on an on a, um, set, a festivity we had with children and uh, we had a fire curtain in front of the stage. We lit it and all the children got burned and the mommies and the daddies said, uh, my child is getting burned and they would try to come and save their children but the children wanted to get out and they had parents pushing them. So that created such a chaotic situation, we said, hey, this is great. If we wanted to do this, we would have never done that so well. And the same day, we lit at the end a star, a shooting star. 
everything was finished. Uh, it was just for the uh, characters to leave the show when we lit the star. And we left the pyrotechnic box open uh, behind the stage. Uh, the sparks reached the box and everything exploded. And that confirmed that that action was amazing. From then on, we said all the accidents we can create in a show, better controlled, of course, will be a good uh, thing for encouraging our audience. Another thing that changed our brains radically, that's why technology changes how we think and how we do things, we'll do a, a small experiment. Please close your eyes. I'm going to play some music and imagine a sequence with this music you are going to hear, okay? Yeah, close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? And don't cheat. Did you imagine the sequence? We bought this horrible device and I want you to do the same. Now close your eyes, imagine a scene with this music. You see how it changes? It's a different aesthetic change, right? That's what happened to our brains. And, you know, after we bought it, we played with it for 20 hours a day, and it just screwed our brains for life. Another great lever for change in La Fura was spaces. We chose mm, unconventional uh, spaces for our performances. People were used to going to the theater, and what we did was we said, if we're going to act, what we will not do is go to a theater because we came from the streets and we were used to that. And we discovered that we, if we shut down the audience in an enclosed place, the energy uh, would rebound, rebounds and you wouldn't be able to, you know, turn on the engine of that place. It's as if you're cooking on a stove and it starts boiling and you can't stop it. In non-conventional spaces, people are also somewhat vulnerable. It's not like when you're sitting now, nice and quiet. If I take a bucket of water and splash my colleague here on the stage, you're not uh, splashed. But if he's sitting on this on the stage, um, on the chairs where you are, and we start splashing one another, you'll all get wet. That's another thing we used to do, getting everyone into what we were doing, creating like an invitation to come up on the stage. And it wasn't just us acting. Part of the acting we did had consequences on the audience. And this was part of the show. The people could see what you were doing, plus how that guy was running and how this girl was screaming, how you got that guy wet. It was like two and three and four shows at once. After explaining all this, I'm going to show you a video of what that was. Here it is.
tiro fins quasi al final a la presentació del doc i ja. D'acord? Well, it was since 1984 to 2014, we have been working on interactivity, especially on how to how to tell stories and how to get the audience involved in our performances. This is just uh, something that you can watch. This is what we did in Nanjing. And the last show, I will show you a little bit the video of from 1984 to 2015. So 30 years after, the interaction, which was uh, the beating, that get out of the way, and I'm going to get you, which was the performance you saw on the video, it turned into a thing where the interaction mode between we and our audience is through their smartphone. Um, a smartphone is a tool that is yours, and if it tells you something, it's like the first time, the first time we saw television, do you remember? Uh, the grandmas used to talk to the people in television. Oh, you're looking at the video, right? That's why you're not answering. This is in Nanjing, the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games for the youth. Athletes of 12 to 18 years. Do you remember what I was telling you? Okay. Let's go to the last part. This is the last show we had where the interaction we wanted was uh, to have it through the mobile phones. And we found that, oh yes, I was talking about the grandmas. Remember the grandmas, when they started watching television, they would speak with the people in television. Uh, people, the new sky would say, good morning, and the grandma would say, good morning to the television. Or even the typical uh, experiment, the first time uh, people saw a train coming in through a screen, they ran away because they thought they were really going to be uh, run over by the train. When a new technology arises, people are very naive, and the smartphone is still a new technology. Even if we think we master it, we've discovered that we're still very naive uh, because we have created a mobile app that sends messages, but it doesn't send the same message to you than to you. And we can make you and you make two different groups and th end up throwing things during the show. And 
When you say you're an idiot and he says, no, you are the idiot, uh, creating separate groups of people that you can manipulate thanks to the object theory. An object makes you more accomplished with these people and uh, this object uh, makes you more accomplished with that one. For example, Android uh, and Apple or beer and Coca-Cola or a vegetarian or animal um, diet. Uh, according to this theory in which we all, through the objects we use, are, become members of part of groups, we can send different kinds of information to different people in different moments. So we saw that if an actor says, please kneel, no one will do it. But if your smartphone tells you, you will think about it, won't you? You'll say, wow, this guy says I have to kneel. Maybe I should, right? And people do amazing things if their smartphone tells them to do it. I'll show you the video. They have to download the app through the Wi-Fi. And then we start a game with messages, sending pictures to the server so that we can take them, put them on the screen. And no matter how many things we've done before telling stories and we have this habit in every technology we have, we apply this to. Let's see if we can see an image of people playing. You see everyone is uh, paying attention to the show and their smartphones at the same time, which is interesting. They don't get lost. They follow the story. It's action, reaction all the time. And people expect the phone to give them clues for the next step. I'm saying this because BBC asked if we had an interactive mobile app. Well, here we are. We can help you in any way you need. And to finish, the, what we're preparing now is with the restaurant Bugaric, one of the 10 best restaurants in the world for many years. It's not easy to be uh, top 10 for 10 years. And we've been collaborating with them for several years because we realized that it's a talent center. Beyond the restaurant, they have R&D. Many restaurants don't have any R&D. They are one of the few restaurants in the world with a talent center around the restaurant with very large groups of scientists that collaborate with them. So it's not just the restaurant, it's everything involved in that knowledge center. And they <coughs> asked us uh, to work with them on a documentary on creativity. And then we discovered what's most important in their activity is how they do their work, uh, their inner thoughts in the working group they have. And the documentary is on the uh, thinking for this group. But in La Fura, uh, their way of thinking forced us to do a documentary that was non-linear, but rather through uh, thinking thought uh, blocks, because it's very random. It's what they have said in many places. We have uh, put together and we've created like small scripts from what they said without them knowing that they were telling a story. But what's important in the documentary is to that it is ex, that you can apply it to any research center or to any human working group that wants to group, wants to work in a group and wants to reach excellence. That has uh, something that was something that um, we can apply to anything we want to, and that's what the documentary is about. And La Fura, we needed a little more interaction. We said there's a new uh, narrative, a new storytelling, which is the web doc that uh, and we're going to recommend a navigation that is not immediate at all. It's a game 
as if you're cooking, you know, you can't cook unless you wait for the ingredients, you know, to boil as many hours as they have to or be fried or stir fry. So everything takes time. The idea is that you are doing their job uh, through the web. You'll have to wait for something to be finished to move on to the next bit of information and you'll have to find objects. We're even thinking uh, that you might download uh, an application to have a, an even greater interaction. And when you least expect it, the phone will contact you and say, hey, that bit is ready, why don't you check it out and see what's happened. And it's an idea like this. The documentary is based on uh, nine main ideas, and the web doc will have these same parameters as the documentary. So, so it's in a linear way. Or it could be like we see here, bit by bit, and you can uh, visit each of the parts. You can visit the restaurant with augmented reality and several other things. I'm out of time. Okay. Well, thank you for bearing with me. Pep has left. Oh, Pep, don't leave yet because uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Do you have any questions about the La Fuda? We have uh, you have given us a very brief overview, but Carlos Obando from the Autonomous University of the Master's Degree of uh, Transmedia. Well, you have uh, given a great presentation. I loved it. And I really think that uh, those who live in Barcelona or are here from Barcelona, the work that has been done as of 1984, it's uh, um, impressive from the point of view of performing uh, theater and interactivity. It's amazing. All these uh, accounts that we are talking about are impressive. But I want to ask you now... Well, you have uh, talked about a web doc. Are you, if you're thinking about that, are you going to leave the theater aside or are you looking for new digital genres uh, to complement what you have been doing? Well, our theater evolves and now what we are now uh, selling is not a theater performance that people go to but uh, that people can experience uh, or experiment with a smartphone. And... Uh, uh, this, what we try, we try to tell stories uh, through it, web doc, theater, and everything. The important thing is of connecting with people or telling stories or have people uh, get uh, get people to think. So the evolution that you're talking about is uh, just uh, doing away with the label of theater. When we talk, when we think about La Fura de las Baos, we think about theater and you have done many other things or other kinds of uh, nar narratives uh, we all know that but I'm not talking so much about the smartphone because I understand it very clearly the intervention of technology in, in uh, uh, theater performance but we're talking about this evolution well we want to leave aside the label of theater performance because we believe that theater well what people understand by theater in general terms, particularly youth, young people, people that uh, are really bored in the theater because uh, somebody has written something and some perform it uh, more with more or less um, uh, success. And uh, if you have seen the video, you understand that this is not for us. It's what we already were doing in 1984. And... Uh, Theatre is much more open than that. But uh, theatre, the word, the term theatre has uh, been uh, positioned at a certain place and moment in time that people are sitting down in a theatre and actors that perform a text that has been written by someone and people don't want to go there. And we want to get away from that label because we have never been that. And we won't stop doing uh, performances or... But the most important thing is to tell things and say things and that people have fun when they come to see us and uh, get people to think, to be more open, if possible. This is what we're interested in. If we have, uh, have to do it through more performance or web docs, well, it was, we will see. It depends on what we're interested in, interested in telling people or proving <laughs> 
it depends on what we want to do, we will use one or the other platform for it. There is no academic rule for that. We're not academ academ academicians, we are Epicureans. A round of applause for Pep. <laughs>